Hello guys, welcome to the JHook and in today's session we are going to see how to deploy Spring Boot application on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, with this tutorial, I'll be sharing you this guide. Uh, this guide involves all the steps which is required from building the Spring Boot and uh, creating a Docker image, pushing it to the Docker Hub and then finally deploying it to the Kubernetes cluster. So you can find the link of this guide uh, in the description section below. Uh, before we begin, I just want to give you a heads up. This is going to be a long session because we are doing everything from the scratch. And I would recommend if you are starting with the Kubernetes, then uh, try to do it by yourself and start with the scratch so that you know the nitty gritty of a Kubernetes and its ecosystem. As I said, this is a long tutorial. So I have divided my tutorial into the fourth part along with the timestamps. So if you know how to build the Spring Boot microservice, then you can skip the first part. In the second part, I'm going to test the Spring Boot application on a Docker. So if you know how to deploy Spring Boot inside the docker then you can skip the second part also and in the third part i'm going to push the docker image to the docker hub so if you know all these three parts then you can skip all those three sections and directly jump into the fourth part that is deploying spring boot to the kubernetes cluster so i hope this would help you uh, to reduce your time and to learn the kubernetes more okay so it starts with the step number one in the step number one, we are going to bootstrap a Spring Boot application. For that, head over to Spring Boot Initializer. And the Spring Boot Initializer, what we need to do is we need to select the project. So I'm setting a Gradle project. Second language, Java. Yes, we want Java. I'm going to use 2.3.0 version of a Spring Boot. And the group, group I will use com.jhook. Artifact for this tutorial, I can put jhook and kts for kubernetes you can put whatever you want to have and i'm going to use java 11 and then we need to add some dependencies so click add over here and then we are going to create a restful web service so add spring web so that should be sufficient enough for starting with the spring boot application click generate okay so here you can see jhook kts.zip so download this file here is the jhook kts.zip file. This is the file which we have downloaded. Uh, we are going to extract it. Okay, so now we need to import this project into your IDE. And in this tutorial, I'm going to use the IntelliJ. So I'm going to import this project into the IntelliJ. So after importing the project, this is how it's gonna look like. And just to speed up a process, I have created a very basic Spring Boot microservice and that is jhook controller where i have defined my spring boot microservice that is hello and it is returning a simple string that is hello jhook k8s the next thing which we need to do over here is to define a docker file because we need to create a docker container for this so for docker container we are going to use open jdk 8 because that is required to run a spring boot application and second thing we need a jar file so our spring boot will be uh, build into this directory build and slash lib and there it is so we need to pick this jar file to run inside a docker container so we have specified the path build libs and this is a wildcard that is star dot jar so it will pick the all the jar file inside the libs directory and it will copy that jar file with the name or it will make the jar file with the name app dot jar and this is the entry point so this will just execute our jar so that the execution pattern would be java hyphen jar it is the same way we execute any normal jar file in the next step we need to build the docker image and for that we need to open the terminal and for building the docker image we are going to run the command docker build and then we are tagging the image with the name jhook k 8 spring boot and we are going to build our docker image okay that's done now we need to test our spring boot application inside the docker container and for that we need to use the command docker run and we are exposing it to the port 8080 and then we need to mention the image name which we had with which we have tagged it so okay so our spring boot application is getting started and yeah it's started now let's test our uh, 
microservice endpoint go to browser and paste the url localhost 8080 and slash hello and as you can see this is the string which is returned and our spring boot application is running inside our docker container so next step uh, we are going to push this docker image into our docker hub okay so moving back to our guide so we are at step number six where we need to create a docker registry at hub.docker.com and here you need to register your account and create a docker registry or docker hub registry which we call it and as you can see over here uh, this is my account and here i have created some repositories and this is the Kubernetes repository, which we are going to use for this application or for this demo. So if you can click on this, then you can see there is no image which we have pushed uh, from uh, anywhere. So right now uh, in this session, we are going to push the Docker image, which we have built and run uh, to this repository. Okay, so move to step number seven. And here you can see in the, there are sub steps. In the step number one, which we have mentioned, like build the Docker image, so which we have already done. So you can skip this one. Uh, moving to the second part, here you need to tag the uh, Docker build with the jhook k8 Spring Boot, as well as you need to mention the Docker Hub registry name. So here, that is rahulvak 17 slash Kubernetes. And if you go to hub.docker, here you can see, this is the repository which we need to mention here while building or tagging the image. So just copy this command from here and go to terminal. Uh, I'll stop this application and you can uh, paste over here. Okay, so the image has been tagged. You can verify the images by typing the command docker images and it should you should see the image. So the name which we are looking for is JHUKTS Spring Boot. So this is the latest image which we have built and tagged it. Moving to the next step, we need to push this Docker image to the Docker Hub. And for that, we are going to use the command Docker push followed by our repository name that is rahulvak 17 slash Kubernetes and then the image name which we have tagged. So uh, we need to copy this command uh, from here but before that we need to perform a docker login from command line and we need to supply our username it will ask for password and we need to supply the password okay so now our login has succeed uh, we can push our docker image so we will paste our command okay so that is the docker push command and then we need to hit enter. Okay, so our image has been pushed to Docker Hub and which we can verify from our repo here. Just need to refresh the page. And here you can see, jhook k spring boot a few seconds ago so we have pushed our docker image to the hub.docker.com successfully okay so moving to the step number eight we need to start our kubernetes cluster and for this tutorial we are going to use the kube spray for provisioning our kubernetes cluster and if you haven't done before then i would highly recommend to uh, go through this link uh, where 12 step for installing production ready kubernetes cluster where i have demonstrated how to use kube spray for installing kubernetes cluster and uh, yeah so before that uh, we need to start our vagrant box and for that you need to use the command vagrant up it will start up your vagrant box now our Vagrant box has started and uh, before we begin or before we log into our Ansible master, I could show you uh, uh, my Vagrant file. And this is the Vagrant file uh, which we are using uh, for this tutorial. And here you can see this is our Ansible master node. This is our K master node and this is our K worker. So from here, we will be provisioning our Kubernetes cluster using uh, Kube Spray Ansible Playbook. And the name of this master is A master. So what you need to do is Vagrant SSH and then A master. A 
In the next step, we need to run the Ansible playbook and command for running the Ansible playbook is this. But before you run this playbook, you need to set up your Kubernetes cluster. And to do that, I already mentioned you need to follow this guide. Otherwise, this playbook you won't be able to execute. So I'll also put down the description in the top section uh, of this tutorial so that you can follow uh, that tutorial for Kubernetes using KubeSpray. So I'm assuming that uh, you have installed or you have set up your Kubernetes uh, using KubeSpray and you followed that tutorial. So uh, I'll copy this command. And before that, you need to look here. Uh, there is a KubeSpray folder which we have downloaded. So we need to switch to that KubeSpray folder. Okay, yeah. And now we need to uh, paste that command. Uh, this is an Ansible playbook which will take some time to execute. And once it's done executing, then we'll proceed from there. So I'll pause this video and come back when it's ready. All right, as you can see, our KubeSpray Ansible playbook has finished and it has set up our Kubernetes cluster successfully. And here you can see the node one and node two, both are set up. And now we need to exit from here and head over to our guide. So moving to the step number nine, uh, we need to deploy our Docker image, the Spring Boot Docker image, which we are talking about. So this is the command kubectl create deployment demo. Demo is like a, your own word, which you can put anything like a demo hello world, demo jho, whatever you feel comfortable with. Next thing we need to specify this image tag, and then we need to specify the Docker Hub repository. So for that, we are using rahulwag slash Kubernetes colon jho k8 spring boot as you can see over here. So this is the repository which we are going to use and this is the image which we are going to use Docker image. Okay, but before that I told you to exit from Ansible uh, A master that is Ansible master because that is only used for QSpray provisioning. Okay, after that being done we need to log into one of the Kubernetes node uh, and for that the command is vagrant ssh Oh, sorry, it should be SSH uh, K master that is for Kubernetes master. Okay, now we uh, logged into node one as you can see that is our K master. Uh, I'll clear the screen a bit and if you move to the step number nine, then we need to copy this command and paste it here. Okay, now as you can see, the message deployment app demo has been created and you can verify this deployment with this command. Okay, so here you can see uh, the deployment has been created and you can list the deployment using this command demo. And here it is mentioning zero slash one. That means the deployment is not ready yet because it's only 18 seconds. So what you need to do is again, you need to run the command. I, I, I run the same command again. So you can see now it's ready. Okay. And the same command I have mentioned over here, kubectl get deployments. And here you can see all the deployments which we have created. So now you can make a sense like we have used the word demo. So this is the same word. Uh, you can find it over here in the deployment section and the status and the age, the number of minutes um, since the application is ready or the deployment has been done. Okay, the next step uh, into the same step number nine is like expose the deployment to the outside world. So right now we have deployed the Kubernetes application, but still it is ins running inside the Kubernetes cluster. No one can access it from outside the world. So for that, we need to expose the deployment. So just be careful about the uh, commands. Here we have created the deployment with the name demo. And now we are exposing this, that same deployment with the name demo. Okay, so that's the difference between these two commands. And the type which we are using is load balancer. There are uh, number of types which you can specify you can go on kubernetes.io and read the documentation but uh, we are using the load balancer type 
and the third parameter which we are passing over here is the name so we are exposing this deployment as a service and the type of the name of that service is demo service this is again my user defined name i can put whatever i want and then after that we need to specify the external ip as well as the port so these are the mandatory parameter which you need to supply to expose the deployment to the outside of the world okay so i'll copy this command from here and paste it over here and as you can see the service demo has been exposed okay you can verify this service also with the command kubectl get service and here you can see the demo service type is load balancer the cluster ip is this port is 8080 and it's running from 12 seconds so this is the step for exposing your deployment to the outside world if you move further into the guide then you'll find the same command which i mentioned uh, in the terminal so the same command is over here okay uh, in the next step we are going to test our uh, rest endpoint and accessing the rest endpoint from outside the world outside of the kubernetes cluster so right now we are sitting inside the kubernetes cluster and the things which we need to note down over here is the port number that is 30895 okay all right so what i'll do is i'll exit from here from the kubernetes master node okay so i'm outside of the kubernetes master look at your vagrant file again and in the vagrant file we need to know the ip address of our kubernetes master so this is the ip address which we have assigned okay so now uh, just copy this ip address head over to your browser paste the ip address and then mention the port name that is 30895 copy it paste it and the rest endpoint is hello and as you can see now we can access the same rest endpoint outside of the world i mean outside of the kubernetes world so this is how uh, you expose your uh, application within from within a kubernetes cluster last step which is there uh, is clean up the deployment and service which we have created in kubernetes master so for that uh, again log back into k master node okay i'll clear the screen a bit and here you can see the kubectl uh, delete service and the name of the service is demo service okay so the service has been deleted uh, the same thing which you can do for the deployment also so kubectl delete deployment demo oh, there is a typo with the command so the command is this okay so deployment has been deleted and now you can go back to your browser and refresh the page again and it's not accessible so this is how you are going to clean up uh, the deployment and the services which you have created uh, inside the kubernetes cluster but remember you have not deleted your kubernetes cluster your kubernetes cluster is still up and running so yeah this is the last step uh, in the deployment or spring boot deployment in your local kubernetes cluster I hope you liked the today's session and I'll put down the guide link into the description section so you can pretty much follow all the step which I did in during this session and all the commands which I have uh, used are there available in the guide uh, which you can pretty much copy paste and if you have any questions or any doubts or any errors which you are facing then please put down into the comment section I'll try to get back to you and in the part two we are going to use the same spring boot application and we are going to perform the deployment on a google cloud services so stay tuned and follow my next tutorial for if you are interested in the cloud platform uh, where we are going to use the google cloud services yep so thank you thanks for your time bye bye